guys welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is Jess I am a third year no fourth year third grade teacher in Southern California and today I want to talk about classroom management one thing that I always think about at the beginning of the year is how my classroom management system from the year prior worked if I liked it if I need to make tweaks and kind of just reflecting on my practices with my students and their behavior and what I expect of them, how I nurture those positive relationships with them, and all that kind of good stuff. And so I really, really, really like the system that I used last year. It worked really well, my students really liked it, my families really liked it, and I think it really helped to create a positive family environment in my classroom. And so I really wanted to share with all of you. So the system I use is called the Essential 35, which was adopted from the Ron Clark Academy. Last year in May, I had the opportunity to go to the Ron Clark Academy and see see all of the magic happen in person and I was hooked. And so one of my big takeaways from going there was the essentials that they use. So basically they are a guideline for the students that the whole school follows and they basically just set forth exactly what the expectations are. So if you are interested in using this by the way, this is a book that Ron wrote. He actually has a newer version on Amazon right now and I don't have that one this one is well loved you might be able to tell that it's like <laughs> ripped on the edges and stuff but I've read this three times now. And it just explains every single rule that he has at his school and kind of why they chose this rule. I feel like reading this book was really helpful for me in explaining it both to my students, my admin, and my parents so that they understood the purpose behind all of it, why I chose these rules, and kind of how they're going to benefit students. So if you are thinking right now that 35 rules sounds like a lot, you're right. It does sound like a lot. But I think one thing that I really want to tell you and parents and my admin and everyone who's learning about this is that they're not rules um, as far as disciplining students. So the purpose isn't to say, this is my rule and if you don't follow this, here's the punishment for it. Do I have consequences if they're not followed? Yes. But the focus is not on them just following my rules because I'm the dictator and they need to do what I say, if you know what I mean. The purpose is to help them be the best people possible. So much of our job is helping these little people understand how to function in the world and how to be good people. And so I feel like this system really helps them to understand exactly what we expect of them and how to follow through with it. So we are a PBIS school. So we have be respectful, be responsible, and be safe as our three school rules. And so when I was thinking about how to implement this, I was thinking, all of these essentials fit under those three rules. All of them are teaching them how to either be respectful, be responsible, or be safe. So when I was packaging this to my parents, I feel like if I were to come at them and say, here's the laundry list of 35 expectations I have for your students, that would be a little overwhelming, and I feel like the community that I teach in would probably freak out at that. <laughs> but when I explained it to parents, I said, I do expect your students to be respectful, to be responsible, and be safe as our school rules. However, that doesn't make it explicit for students. So with this system, I feel like it really helps students to understand exactly not just what is expected of them, but how to show that thing. Because just telling a kid to be respectful, what does that look like? What does that mean? How do I do that? So telling them when you are walking through a door, you need to hold the door open for someone else. When you are given a gift, you need to say thank you. When you sneeze, you need to cover your mouth. Like Those are very explicit guidelines to tell them exactly what is expected of them. Because I feel like so often what happens in classrooms, and I'm guilty of this in the past too, is we tell kids to be respectful, and then when they're not respectful, we get upset with them or they get in trouble, right? But if we were to tell them, this is what respect looks like in this scenario. This is what responsibility looks like in this scenario. It really helps them to understand those words and to put them into practice. So if you're wondering how I roll these rules out, it's hard to say, um, I do not do them all at once. I feel like that would be very overwhelming to do all 35 rules on one day, especially if it's the first day of school. That's not very fun. And I like to do a mix of both procedures, rules, and fun, get to know you, get to know the classroom, and get excited about school. So uh, we start school on Wednesday. So for the first five school days, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday, I will do um, seven rules a day. And then we're constantly going back over them. One other reason why I really suggest you to get this book is because some of the rules are definitely not going to apply to you. Um, this school is a very different kind of school, the Ron Clark Academy, where the author works um, because they are able to do amazing things with their students, like take them on overnight plane trips. So some of their rules are about plane etiquette. That's not going to apply to my students. I mean, yes, maybe they're going to go on a plane sometime, but that doesn't really apply to our school because I'm never going to be in a situation where I'm on a plane with them. I don't think. 
at least not at this point in my career. So it would be kind of silly and I think parents would be confused and students would be kind of confused if that were one of my rules. So I just took that one out. So I would really suggest you reading this book and then deciding what rules are going to fit your students and your school and then also your culture as well. So I believe in here one of the essentials was something like always saying yes ma'am, yes sir, no ma'am, no sir. I live in Southern California and the author is from Atlanta, Georgia. In the South, that's definitely applicable. That's something that is part of their culture there. That's not part of our culture in California. Maybe it should be, but that's not something that my students are accustomed to saying and that wouldn't really like fit where I live, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna teach them to be respectful in other ways, but that's not part of our culture that we have here where I live. So that would be kind of out of place for us. I hope that makes sense. Here's another one about no Doritos allowed at his school. And so there's a funny part in here about uh, teachers going to visit his school and saying, okay, I applied all these rules and you know, I told my, my class that they can't have Doritos, but I don't know why. And they started laughing and saying that that's just something silly that he does. And um, he goes into explain it in more detail here. But you're gonna wanna pick the rules that apply to you, that are important to you for your classroom, your community, the culture of your school and all that good stuff. So there's tons of knowledge in here. I would really, 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 really recommend if you are considering trying out the system that you get this book. One thing that I want to mention as well is that if you are overwhelmed by the number of rules or if you are a parent and you are thinking like, wow, this is a lot and this sounds um, like really strict or mean, I want you to take a deep breath and I'm going to show you the rules, but I want you to understand that first and foremost, that my classroom, in order for it to function well, in order for me to feel like I'm being successful as a teacher, the most important thing is that my classroom feels like a family, that my students are connected to one another and to me, and that we build relationships with one another. So whatever classroom management system you're using, building relationships has to be at the forefront. And this is one of the ways that I do that and how I teach them to be a team with one another. But I also am constantly smiling to my students. I'm constantly getting to know them, asking them questions about their life. I'm engaged in their learning. And with them as human beings, I show them respect. I feel like if you don't have that relationship piece, it doesn't matter what system you use, it's not gonna be successful because your students don't know that you care about them. And if your students don't know that you care about them, they don't care about what system and what rules or whatever you're trying to tell them. I know that's kind of a harsh thing to say, but you have to, have to, have to build relationships with your students. And I'm gonna be sharing more tips for that in the coming weeks, but there are tons of videos on YouTube. There are tons of teachers on Instagram that share tips on building relationships with students, but it can really be as simple as smiling at them, getting to know them, asking them questions about them, going to their soccer games on the weekends, even though you're tired. Um, things like that really mean so, so much. And when your students feel valued and seen and appreciated and respected, they're gonna to wanna to show you the same. So just keep that in mind before we jump into this because I feel like that is at the heart of classroom management and that whatever system you are using, if you care about your students and you build relationships with them, it's gonna work a whole lot better. Okay, so I am showing you guys the Google Doc that I use on the first couple days of school to show them our Essential 35. So when I start talking about rules with them, I pull them down on the carpet, I show them this slide, and I ask them if they've ever seen this before. And every single one of them has because they're posted all over our school, all of our classrooms say them, they talk about them in assemblies, so they're very familiar with this. And then I try asking them, what does that mean? What does it look like to be respectful? What does it look like to be responsible? What does it look like to be safe? And we talk about that and they have some really good ideas and some of them are things that we are gonna talk about in our essentials. So having them kind of put a name or having them come up with that idea of what that looks like and then seeing it validated in one of the rules I think is really, really valuable. And then some of them are sitting there like, Oh shoot, I don't know what that looks like. And so being able to have that discussion and see who kind of gets it and who doesn't and then being able to put their words to it, I think is really, really valuable. So we start with that. How can we make sure to follow these rules? That's part of the discussion. And then these are the little shield crest things that I said I would share with you guys on TPT. And I just snipped them and put them into a Google Doc. So the first one is to make eye contact. So anytime someone is speaking, get the students know that they have to keep their eyes on them at all times. Even if that person is behind them, then they need to turn around and look at them. Whether it's me, whether it is our principal, whether it is another student, whether it's a substitute, it doesn't matter. It's a sign of respect to make eye contact with someone. So that is really important. That's one of the first things we talk about. And I don't think these are in any you know, particular order, but the second one is to congratulate your classmates. So this I feel like is especially important because 
Some of them are so competitive and when they lose, they get really upset. They don't want to congratulate each other, but it's important that when someone in the class wins at a game or getting something right or anything that we're going to congratulate that person. I teach them a bunch of different little congratulatory um, chants and cheers. So um, that is something that they will get in bigger detail, but even just clapping and saying good job is a great place to start. The next one um, says surprise others by performing random acts of kindness. So this is one that I remember Ron talking about when I visited RCA and there's nothing better than getting a random act of, of kindness, right? Whether that's someone telling you something nice, whether that's getting a compliment, whether it's a small gift or treat or whatever it is, you have the power to make other people feel good. And I think that's really important to share with students that even if you just tell someone, oh, I like your shirt or those shoes are really cool or, you know, great job um, with the answer you gave in math today or whatever it is, making each other feel good feels good for you. And so that is something that we talk about. The next one, respect other students' comments, opinions, and ideas. When possible, make comments such as, I agree with Sarah because, or I think John make, made an excellent observation. And these little accountable talk stems are something that we have posted in the classroom. They will have in their little folders, and we use them all the time. But it's important that even if someone thinks something different than you, that's okay, and you need to be respectful of what they say. Okay, the next one, if you win, do not brag. If you lose, do not show anger. Instead, say something like, I really enjoyed the competition and can't wait to try again, or say nothing at all. Showing anger shows weakness. I feel like that one is pretty self-explanatory, but this one comes up a lot because we do a lot of games in class, even simple things like Kahoot. Some of my boys get so upset and so competitive if they don't win. And so talking about if you win, you need to be humble. And if you lose, you need to be happy for the other person. And like we just talked about, congratulate your classmates. Okay, this one is important because I feel like a lot of times students are really ungrateful. When you receive something, never insult the gift or giver. Um, never insult them by saying something negative about the gift or insinuating that it wasn't appreciated. So like even something as simple as like for Christmas, I'll give them a book and a pencil. And some of them say, oh, is that it? Last year, my teacher gave me this, or I don't like this color. Oh, like it's not a fun gift, and that's rude, and we talk about that. We talk about how it doesn't really make people feel good when they went out of their way to get you something or buy you something, and they thought of you, and then you don't like it. Even if you don't like it, act like you do, and say thank you. Okay, the next one, cover your mouth when you sneeze, cough, or burp, and say excuse me. So this is something that if you are an elementary school teacher, you are very familiar with. How many times have you been sneezed on your face? <laughs> I think that has happened to all of us a handful of times at least. Um, so teaching them manners and covering your mouth is important, I think. We could all agree. Okay. I love this one. Do not show disrespect with gestures. So especially if you are getting like reprimanded or for having a discussion or asking not to do something and you roll your eyes or go, Ugh, that is absolutely not allowed. Um, I remember Ron talking about this one too at RCA and he, and he said that when a student breaks their rules, I think they have to like put their name on the board or something like that. And if a student gives any kind of like eye roll or any kind of disrespectful gesture, then they have to put a check mark next to it, which means they have the next step of consequence too. So um, this is something that is really important, staying calm, even if you disagree or if you're getting in trouble, um, because you need to be respectful at all times. Follow along as we read together in class. How many times has this happened where you call on a student or someone is supposed to be reading and they're just not paying attention and they don't know where we're at? That is so annoying to me. So talking about this ahead of time is one of those things where it's like, if we don't explicitly tell them and we don't tell them that we expect it of them, then we can't just assume that they're going to know. We have to remember that they're young, they're babies, and that they need us to be explicit with what we expect. And so this is one of those things that I think drives most teachers crazy when it happens, um, but we need to be explicit in telling them that that is the expectation. Oh, this one is huge for me. Always say thank you when given something. There is no excuse for not showing appreciation. So I think, again, I feel like I just keep repeating myself, but as teachers, how many times have you given a student something and they don't say anything? Whether it's a gift, whether it is a reward, whether it's a piece of paper, it doesn't matter. So one thing that I started implementing last year was if I give my students a reward, like a piece of candy or anything, if they don't say thank you within three seconds, I take it back. 
that might sound kind of harsh, but I can tell you without a doubt, if you give a student a piece of candy, they don't say thank you and you take it away, that will be the last time they do not say thank you. And yes, they might get upset. Yes, they might cry, but you know what? That is part of the learning process and they need to feel the sting of not having that in order to remember, oh yeah, I need to say thank you. So it's okay to let them get upset because I can guarantee you they will get upset. And there were a few tears last year, but they learned from it and it didn't happen again. And I can guarantee you they will say thank you and they're given something from now on. So this one, yes, it's a little harsh taking something away from them, but I think it's a really good lesson for them to learn to say thank you. Answer all written questions with complete sentences. In third grade, this one is something that they're definitely still learning. We use the race techniques, so restate the question, answer the question, cite your evidence, and then explain it. And so we go over this quite a bit, but this is just a good reminder for them. This is not one of them that they'll get in trouble if they don't do because they're still learning to do that. They're only third graders, but definitely think if you have like fifth grade and up, this is something that you could expect of them. I love this one as well. Do not ask for a reward. So it says, if you ask for a reward, it will not be given. It is rude to ask for something for good behavior. You should be good to better yourself, not for a reward. So how many times have you heard a kid say, oh, we should get this because we did this, or you should give us extra recess, or we should have five minutes of fun, or whatever it is. And I always tell them, if I was going to give you a reward and then you asked for it, I will no longer be giving that reward. So don't ask for it. And again, like the saying thank you thing, this is one of those things that they learn real quick. You must complete your homework every day. Now, this is one of those things that even though you tell them, you're still gonna have students who don't do it. And so there is a consequence for not doing their homework. But this is one of those things that I go back and forth on because um, especially in third grade, they need a lot of help with their homework, some of them. And so some of them might not have that. So I try to make it as easy as possible on them to get it done. I don't assign things that require um, like internet access or any kind of computer. I try to make sure if they need a pencil to take home that they have it. Um, I try to provide a ton of resources for them and for their parents that they could use at home, but still sometimes students are not gonna get it done. And I'm not saying just the students who don't understand it because that's one thing, but there are gonna be students who just don't do their homework because they forget or they had a baseball game. And so this is one of those things we talk about, that school has to come first. And if you have a dance recital or a baseball game or whatever, that needs to come first. Oh, your schoolwork, not the other things. Those are extracurriculars because they're extra. School is your job. So you need to make sure you get your job done before you do the extra stuff. And if that means that you're doing homework on the way to your baseball game, then that's what that means. Subject transitions will be swift, quiet, and orderly. The opportune amount of time to spend in transition should be less than 10 seconds. So in the beginning of the year, I will count up from one to 10 and I will keep counting past 10 to show them exactly how long it takes them to transition from one thing to the next. But telling them that it should be less than 10 seconds, at first they freak out and they're like, what, that's so fast. But then they realize, oh, we can do it in 10 seconds. That is actually a fine amount of time to be able to do this. So cutting down the amount of time that's wasted in between one thing and the next is really, really helpful. And putting it back on the students that it's their job to transition in less than 10 seconds has been amazing. The next thing, be as organized as possible. Um, this one's pretty self-explanatory, but things like their bins in my classroom, but, but for most of you guys, that would probably be their desks. Um, making sure there's not stuff on the floor, making sure that even their own stuff, like their backpack, their room at home, um, anything that is their space that they take time in, they need to make sure that they are cleaning up after themselves, that they are putting things back where they go, that they're not just shoving loose papers in their binder, that their pencil boxes or pencil pouches are organized, they don't have trash everywhere. So um, you would think that this is something that they would know how to do, or that they would know is important, but they just don't. And so you have to be explicit with them, show them exactly what you expect of each little space that is theirs and how you want it organized. And most of them did pretty well with this one. Okay, the next one. When homework is assigned, do not moan or complain. This will result in a doubled assignment. So this one doesn't usually apply too much because in third grade, um, a lot of them ask for homework, which maybe that might surprise you, but a lot of them, when I don't assign homework, they're like, oh, do you have anything I can do? Or they just expect it. So it's not really like a big deal, but if this were to happen, they know that they will get double the amount. So um, yeah, that's that. <laughs>
The next one, when a substitute teacher is present, all class rules still apply. I know this is hard, but it is very important. So this is one of those rules that we always talk about before we have a sub. We go over exactly what they're supposed to be doing. We go over what they're going to be doing. We go over who the sub is, how we can show respect to them. Um, I pick a person who is in charge of helping the substitute with technology and anything else that they might need help with. So honestly, I get positive sub notes most of the time. There was one time last year where there was one student who didn't have a good day with the sub. But other than that, my classroom runs very smoothly when there's a sub because my students know what the expectations are. Okay, this one has kind of a lot in it, so I'm going to scroll down. But it says, follow the specific classroom protocols. We will be organized, efficient, and on task. Do not get out of your seat without permission. Do not speak unless you raise your hand and I call on you. I ask you a question and you are responding. It is recess or lunch, or I instruct you to otherwise. For example, small group work. So, this may sound very strict. They need to understand when it's okay to talk, when it's okay to get up, and that they need to be on task the entire time. And I feel like that should be expected in schools. So that's all I'm gonna say about that one. Okay, the next one, you may bring a bottle of water to class. You may not leave for a drink of water during class. Um, this is important for me because I am in a portable and we don't have a water fountain at all. So students need to bring a water with them because the closest water fountain is all the way across campus and it takes a lot of time for them to go to it and come back and they're going to miss a lot. So they're not allowed to get up for any reason, not for the bathroom, not for water or anything in the middle of a lesson. Other times they can go to the bathroom, but they are not allowed to leave the classroom to get water. And so in the beginning of the school year, I keep water bottles in my classroom, but I tell them I'm only going to give you one. And especially because it's so hot, I don't want to just leave them high and dry and like not let them hydrate, but they're not going to leave the classroom to get water. And um, most of them have like a refillable water bottle that they bring. So this is a big deal to me. I know this might sound really strict, but a lot of class time is wasted by students going to the restroom or going to get water when they don't really need it. So they can bring a water bottle to school. They can drink out of it whenever they need, but they're not going to leave the classroom to go do that. The next one says show respect to your peers in discussion. So things like making eye contact, making sure that you're listening, not messing around with anything, especially a lot of times we have like X markers and whiteboards. So those aren't toys. You're not playing with those things. And um, it's important to make sure that you are listening to the person who's speaking. Next one, keep yourself in the bathrooms clean, flush the toilet, wash your hands, never leave a mess in the bathroom. Especially in elementary school, this is such a big problem and I feel so bad for our janitors because the bathrooms are just trashed every day. And so I feel like if this were a rule in every classroom and this was specifically explicitly taught to students, like you go to the bathroom, you put the toilet paper in the toilet, you flush it with your foot, you wash your hands with soap, you put the toilet, you put the paper towel in the trash can and you leave that is what you do, then there wouldn't be so much stuff on the floor all the time. Oh, this one is so cute. Okay, so it says, greet visitors and make them feel welcome. Shake hands, tell him or her who you are, and welcome that person. So anytime a person comes into our classroom, whether it's our principal, the superintendent, a yard duty, a parent, a student from another classroom, my students all at the same time say, welcome to our classroom. And it is so, so cute. So I feel like in third grade, especially because I don't want them like all like running over to the door to shake hands with someone, they don't like get up and greet them like personally, but if they were to come over to their group, they know that you can say, hi, come join us, what we're doing or whatever. That's kind of how I've tweaked this rule to fit my classroom and, and my grade level is that they just greet them all together as a group. And every single time it happens and an adult walks in for the first time and my kids go, welcome to our classroom. They always start laughing and go, oh my gosh, that was so cute. Thanks guys. Or, you know, whatever. They always mention it and they always say to me later, like, that was so cool. Like, how'd you teach them to do that? And so I feel like this is one of those things, like, it's not hard. It's not something that they can't do. It's just not something that they've ever been told to do. So they don't know. So I love this one. Okay, the next one, do not save seats in the lunchroom. If someone wants to sit down, let him or her. Do not exclude anyone. We are a family and we must treat one another with respect and kindness. I feel like that one does not need to be talked about anymore. I love that rule. Okay, the next one, do not stare at a student that is being reprimanded. You wouldn't want other students looking at you if you were getting in trouble or reprimanded, so don't look at others in that situation. So I try not to, like, publicly reprimand students. Of course, we all know there's times in you know, whole group lessons or whatever that you have to be like, hey dude, stop. But for the most part, I try to have private conversations or just go over and talk to that student individually. But the students all know because they can see and hear that other student doing what they're not supposed to be doing. So I always tell them, 
it's embarrassing and you don't need to look at that person just like you wouldn't want them to look at you. And if you are looking, then you're going to be in trouble too. And so they just don't. <laughs> okay, this one goes along with the restroom one. After we eat, we will clean up after ourselves. And it doesn't matter if it's in the cafeteria or in our classroom, you need to pick up your trash. I can't tell you how many times I've had lunch with a teacher and before implementing the Essential 35, my students left food on the ground. So disgusting. So we talk about this one. I feel like that's also pretty self-explanatory, but we talk about why this is important too, that we need to be respectful to our classroom and our learning environments and also our teacher and custodians because it's not our job to pick up after you. It's not your mom's job to pick up after you. It is your job to pick up your own trash. And so you need to show respect to yourself as well and make sure that you clean up after yourself. The next one, hold the door for people rather than letting it close on someone. So it's so cute to watch them like coming in from somewhere and they, I don't have to ask anyone ever to like hold the door open. They just hold it open for each other. And it's so, so cute. Okay, during an assembly, do not call or speak out to friends. So we must hold, we must uphold an image that shows we have our act together. So I have gotten compliments from my principal before that in assemblies, my class is so well behaved and it's because we explicitly talk about this. And every time we're going to have an assembly, I talk to them about it too. Like, okay, what should we be doing? We should be sitting cross-legged with our hands folded in our lap, sitting up straight, eyes on the speaker, not talking. And that's it. That's what they do. And they know that. When, when walking in line, keep your arms to your sides and move quietly. Walk single file, two to three feet behind the person in front of you with your arms at your sides, face forward at all times, absolutely no talking. If you don't teach elementary school, you might be like, uh, why is that important? But if you do, you already know that when you're walking from one place to another, it gets crazy. Kids start watching what's going on around them. They turn around, they trip, fall. It's a mess. So this is definitely necessary. Never cut in line. So this is one of those things that just bugs me so much because we're all going to the same place. It doesn't matter. We talk about that. It really doesn't matter who's first in line because if you're first in line, then you just have to wait for everyone else to get in. So it doesn't really matter. Don't cut in line. If you get in, if you cut in line, you're going to get in trouble. And if someone cuts in front of you, don't say anything or do anything. Let me know about it later and I'm going to handle it. Okay. So if you fuss about it, then you're going to get in trouble as well because you're making a scene about it and it's not a big deal. If someone is bullying you, let me know. I'm your teacher. I'm here to look after you and protect you. I will not let any student bully you or make you feel uncomfortable. It's super important that your kids know that. Okay, some of these are not necessarily rules, but just kind of like mottos to live by to help them stand up for what they believe in, be good people, things like that. So this one says, stand up for what you believe in. You shouldn't take no for an answer if your heart and mind are leading you in a direction that you feel strongly about. I feel like things like this aren't talked about enough with kids. And so just reiterating that, that it's important that if you feel strongly about something that you stand up for it. Be positive and enjoy life. Some things are just not worth getting upset over. Keep everything in perspective and focus on the good in your life. So again, like I said, all of these rules are not necessarily like, do this or you're going to be in trouble. It's just trying to help them be the best people they can be. And this is one of those. Live so that you will never have regrets. If there's something you want to do, do it. Never let fear, doubt, or other obstacles stand in your way. These last ones are like feel good ones. <laughs> Accept that you're going to make mistakes, learn from them and move on. This is really important. And I feel like it's so important to me that I always tell my students when I make a mistake and I point it out and we talk about with them, like how I could improve because they need to know I'm not perfect. I don't have everything all together. I don't always know what I'm doing. I'm going to mess up and that's okay. It's not going to cause a meltdown for me. It's not going to ruin my life. It's not the end of things. Help me fix it. And so that is really valuable and also making that apparent to them that it's okay that you're going to make mistakes. They are expected and respected. Always be honest, no matter what the circumstances, even if you have done something wrong, it is best to admit to me and I will respect that. No explanation needed. Be the best person you can be. By following these rules, it will lead you to be the best person you can be. I think that's the last one. Yeah. People have also asked me how I communicate this to parents. So I talked briefly about this at back to school night, but then I put this little packet for them in uh, my back to school folder. So the last two pages have all the rules explained to them. So they know exactly what the rules are. 
And then this top page goes over kind of my discipline plan. So at the top, it says, be respectful, be responsible, and be safe. To ensure our students' success in following these classroom rules, I have created our Essential 35 to teach students specific expectations for behavior. In order to help my students be the best people they can be and contribute positively to the classroom climate, expected behaviors will be taught explicitly. Please see the back of this page for an outline of our Essential 35, which I just showed you. And then I want to tell parents exactly what is going to happen if they choose to break a rule. So um, this looks a little different than what I did last year, and I've done some reflecting on this this summer. So the first time is a verbal warning. That was the same last year. The second time used to be number on the board. So the students would have to go up with their number on the board and then that would mean they lost five minutes of fun for the day. That kind of feels the same as a clip chart to me or like a color card where they have to flip their card. I don't ever want my classroom management system to be a classroom shaming system. I don't want students to feel embarrassed. I don't want to put them like on the stage for their you know, bad behavior or whatever. Like I want it to be a way that I can have conversations with them and reflect with them and help them understand how to do better. So this year I'm going to try out just putting their number on my clipboard. They're not going to have to get up at all. Um, I'm still, you know, kind of trying to decide how I'm going to communicate that to students. Like if I'm in the middle of a whole group lesson, maybe I'll have the students turn and talk to a neighbor and then I'll just go over and like whisper to that student, like, Hey, your number's on my clipboard. We're going to have a conversation at recess or whatever it is. Um, and then the next time they're going to get a check next to their number on the clipboard. That means that we are going to have a discussion about that at the following recess, which means that they're going to lose part of their recess, but not in the sense of like, oh, you just go sit on the bench at recess because to me, that's not teaching them anything. That's just punishing them. And then they haven't learned anything. They already know they're not supposed to do that thing, but they don't maybe know how to do it better or they don't know the right way to do it because they're not following it. So obviously they're not understanding or there's some kind of disconnect or maybe something's going on that you need to talk to them about. And this goes back to that building relationship piece that if you're just using this as a punishment system, it's not going to be effective. Um, maybe it's going to be effective in the meantime because your students are going to stop doing that thing. But if it's not teaching them appropriate behavior, if it's not helping them become a better person, if it's making them feel shamed and bad about themselves, to me, that's not a successful system. So um, we might go for a walk at recess and go talk about it. Um, we might sit in the classroom and talk about it, whatever seems right at the time or is more comfortable for them. But we're going to have a conversation about it because I want to tell them why they are having to have this conversation um, and help them understand how to make a better choice. And many times they will tell you stuff that is going on that will break your heart and will give you so much empathy and um, help you to understand a little better how to help them. So this is really important to me. Um, and then I just left on there, if there's no recess left for that day, the consequence will be implemented the first recess the following day. So, um, I might need to change up that wording consequence because I don't want it to feel again, like a punishment. Um, but it is a consequence for their action. So I don't know. I might leave it. Um, if this same behavior happens a third time, something serious is going on. I need to contact their parents and let them know what's happening. Um, and then severe disruptions are going to be sent to the office immediately. And then rewards, we do praise daily. That should be happening in every classroom all the time. Um, smelly spots, I have to explain this one to parents, but that is the system where we have the smelly good chapsticks and they can swipe them on the back of their, or I will swipe them on the back of their hand and they can smell them and it's just, um, for whatever reason, is motivating for them and they like it. So I do that. Um, I try to send home um, positive notes or call home randomly. Um, obviously that takes a little bit more time, so that's not as often, but it is very effective whole class five minutes of fun. So at the end of every day, the last five minutes, we play a game, have a dance party, do some kind of fun system. And any student who has not um, gotten their number on the clipboard gets to participate. Um, we do house points and I will be doing a whole video on the house system at another time. And then we also do VIP student every day. So this lays out for parents why I have the essential 35, what happens if they don't follow it, what happens if they do follow it, what they are, and then at the bottom there is a point, there is a place for them to have the student sign it, for the parents to sign it, and then before I make copies of it, I will sign it, and then they already know that I'm following it because I created it. <laughs> so that is what I send home to parents. Don't mind me being like a hot sweaty mess right now because I'm in my office and there's no AC and it's like 110 degrees right now, so 
my face is melting but um, I'm really excited for you guys to watch this and start getting some ideas for how you could shift the culture in your classroom and kind of shift towards a more student-centered relationship building classroom management system if you have any questions I would be happy to discuss this further with you you can feel free to send me a DM on Instagram or leave a comment um, although sometimes the comments get lost on YouTube so definitely if you send me a DM on Instagram I will get back to you for sure if you have any other ideas for fun incentives or rewards or relationship building techniques I would love to hear from you and I would really love it if you left them in the comments so that we can all get ideas from each other I really hope that this was helpful for you guys and that you guys got a lot of good information from this thank you so much for watching this I hope that you guys have a great day and a great school year and I will see you guys soon for another video thanks for watching